Hello, it's Sean and welcome back to Having Fun Repairs. Here in a little bit we're going to diagnose and repair uh, two remote controls, uh, one for a Samsung TV and one for an Apple TV. Uh, I did briefly show these in a previous video and inferred that the power button does not work very well on this remote. The volume up and down button does work on this remote but uh, they could not get the rest of the buttons to uh, perform as it should with their Apple TV product and by they I mean my sister and my brother-in-law. Now this remote is a little bit different. I am not an Apple TV owner so I have no way of testing out these other buttons because they don't operate off of IR like the volume plus and minus but instead operate off of Bluetooth. However we'll try to figure out something. Hence why I'm also recording as early as possible so that way I can send these products back to them and they can test them out and then confirm if functionality has been restored to their liking. That being said, welcome back to the channel. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing if you enjoy the content you see today or any of the other content you happen to stumble on and on my channel. If you enjoy this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. As I stated in my previous videos, I now operate having fun repairs as a as a DBA here in Oklahoma. Uh, so I can accept custom customers in state or out of state. Please visit my Google site. There's a link in the description and a business tab for you to follow to seek repair from me or even if you want something restored and some limited data recovery. And if you just enjoy watching and feel inclined to donate, no obligation, there is a pay, uh, PayPal right in the link uh, and by all means donate to this channel as well. Any and all proceeds from donations will go into uh, go back into repair videos not things that they're being paid for by customers I will say that. Uh, so things I happen to grab from online or uh, say a pawn store or something like that that I just think would make an interesting repair. Uh, so without further ado uh, I'm gonna finish my coffee and we'll get started. And coffee is, uh, it's empty. Might just, uh, let the coffee stains ferment for a while and then pour another glass. So I want to demonstrate for you a way to test these, uh, to test remotes without necessarily having a TV in front of you to, to use. If you recall the video where I repaired my son's uh, electronic uh, dog, it um, had an IR receiver in it. And I briefly showed in that video how you could use a remote. As a matter of fact, I use this remote right here to pick up on the infrared signal that's transmitting out and see it up on an oscilloscope. For those of you who haven't watched that video, I will demonstrate it here as well. Um, we'll do it with, with this remote right here because it's a more common remote, but it will operate the same on any type of IR transmitter. And if you don't have a toy that you can break down that has an IR receiver in it, well, there are and if I mispronounce this, um, you know, just leave me a comment. <laughs> uh, a Arduino uh, little modules that you can buy for IR receivers and transmitters, and they will function exactly the same. So we'll do a test using both things and uh, show you what the signal is going to look like on an oscilloscope. In order to do this, I'm going to need essentially two things. I'm going to need a power supply, which I have off here in the left corner, with two leads to provide uh, DC voltage to either one of these boards, a positive DC voltage, and an oscilloscope with an oscilloscope probe that I can connect to the either of these boards so that way as I hit a button and the signal is being transmitted to this 
uh, IR LED receiver, we can actually see what that signal looks like up on the O-scope, which I'll put up here in a second. To start out with, if you're using an IR receiver module that you've cannibalized out of something else, you need to know where to hook up your ground and your DC source. You also need to know on the IR LED, receiver LED, which leg, because there will be three legs, is going to be the leg that you see the data coming out of. Whereas if you were to purchase one of these receiver modules, it basically comes labeled ground, VCC, and out. That out is where we're going to see that data. Now, what I'm going to do is turn on my power supply. And as you can see up in the upper right hand corner over here, there goes my oscilloscope, which I currently have set for one volt uh, on the vertical scale. And it appears to be one millisecond on my vertical scale, uh, horizontal scale. Now I'm going to slowly increase my uh, DC power supply from zero volts. And you'll see a corresponding change on the oscope, or should see a corresponding change on the oscope. Showing that DC level increase. It's quite possible that I don't have this connected good enough. There we go. Now we're on there. Alright. So I'm going from 0 volts up to approximately 3 volts. Why 3 volts? Well, because the device that this used to be in operated off of 2. Uh, AA batteries which will come to 3 volts DC there you go that should be pretty close enough and you should have saw the corresponding rise in voltage over here on the oscope now all I have left to do is to hit a button on this controller with the IR transmitter facing the IR receiver and you should see the corresponding signal. Well, it looks like I bumped my probe a little bit too much. Let me try that again. Do you see those lows coming across? There goes channel down, there goes channel up, volume down, volume up doesn't seem to be working, the power button doesn't seem to be working, there goes pointer, here goes up, Down doesn't seem to be working unless you press really hard. Left, same way. Right. Oh, we briefly got something. I had to press extremely hard. And these two, three bottom buttons seem to be faded. Looks like exit, play, extra. There we go. Exit seems to be working. There goes that data for play and extra seems to be working as well. There we go. 
So we have a few buttons on here that are either just not functioning as they should or requiring too much pressure to register that they're being pressed. to see what is considered to be a pulse code modulated carrier frequency. Okay, now what does that essentially mean? Well, you can see these lows here and if I was to change my horizontal to get more of that signal, you can begin to see that pulse code modulated carrier signal but we can conclude for now that we have several buttons that are not working as they should on this remote control. Okay, and here goes our other setup. Now with the Arduino uh, IF, I, IR receiver module, uh, same setup as before, you know, DC supply, ground, and uh, VDC going to ground and VCC in. We have our probe going to the output of this little module and then the ground from our probe going to the same ground as our power supply. So again, I will press uh, a button on this controller and you can see that post pulse code modulated signal uh, coming through, which is just essentially pulse code modulation is uh, taking that signal and cutting it off uh, over an interim period and uh, repeating that process to create a specific chain of information. So I kind of want to, let's see, volume down works. As previously stated the power button doesn't, doesn't seem to work. What's another good button that works? Does volume up work? No, we got some issue there. I've got to press pretty hard. Now what about channel down? There we go. Well, Let's look at the difference between volume down and channel down. I'll do that first by clicking the volume down button and then pausing or stop running my oscilloscope. And now we should be able to go through and look at this entire code. I'm also going to take and turn on my cursors. Uh, that should work. And then we're going to hopefully adjust some things. Channel A cursor to measure the time frame between when our pulse goes low to when it goes back high again. Okay, signal analysis has been completed. Let's see if we can uh, figure out a, a bit of what's going on here. Now, you should notice up in the left-hand corner of my screen that we have that pulse code modulated uh, waveform. The upper portion is from the volume down button when it was pressed and the bottom portion was from the channel button when it was pressed. And if you're looking at the screen and you're saying, oh, 
they're similar, well, you would be 100% correct. Uh, they are exactly alike. Let's uh, dig into the signal a little bit here. The first part of the signal, when the button is first depressed, we get a 4.5 millisecond low followed by a 4.5 millisecond high. Now, I would assume that that is probably a wake-up signal between transmitter or remote to receiver or uh, television saying, hey, uh, a remote has been pressed, stand by for uh, confirmation if the transmitter matches the receiver in order to make a change. And then the rest of this signal, uh, we have, if you look at these lows here at the bottom, these short little low uh, areas, uh, those are one point, no, excuse me, 600 microseconds in length or time, uh, every single one of them, okay? But we have 1.6 millisecond highs, three of them corresponding immediately afterwards, and then followed by uh, a 600 millis uh, microsecond low, and then 600 microsecond highs. And then this code repeats itself in similar fashion uh, with variable, uh, you know, highs and lows, but they're exactly the same. And my assumption is, is the rest of this is the actual uh, transmitter code for the receiver to check and say, oh, you are a device that, that we can communicate back and forth with. So if these two signals are exactly the same, then how does the device know which button I've pressed? Let's key up what you now see over on the right. The top portion corresponds to the volume down and the lower portion corresponds to the channel down. And we can see that pulse code modulated signal coming across. Again, they represent the exact same information, but how quickly they're repeated is extremely different. For the volume down button from trailing edge of the first pulse to trailing edge of the first pulse, we have a time of 226 milliseconds. With the inverse of that time being uh, our frequency of 4.42 hertz, and then down on the bottom is the channel down button, and we can see that that uh, pulse code modulated signal is repeated and look at the time difference. Um, from trailing edge to trailing edge, 151.5 milliseconds, and the inverse of that being our frequency, or 6.6 hertz. And so we actually have two subsets of information that is needed to make a transmitter or remote communicate with a receiver or a television in order for an operation to occur. One, they've got to present the correct information to be able to communicate at the get-go. And then two, depending on the spacing or the frequency in which that information is repeated, is going to determine what button was pressed and the corresponding change should now occur. That being said, uh, the primary things we need to worry about for this remote is the volume up, the power uh, button, volume up button, our down button required a hard press to do anything, and so did left and right. Uh, so let's break this uh, down and see what we can figure out.
All right, there was not much to it to get into this device. Essentially, uh, four screws, one, two, three, four on the back cover, and then you can see where uh, the catches on this plastic clamshell um, here, there, there, and um, somewhere up here. Maybe it was on the other side. Oh, it's underneath actually, right there. Uh, how these two pieces fit together. And then immediately you have your uh, primary PCB exposed. Uh, one ribbon cable that goes through the PCB and is terminated here. That ribbon cable is for your pointer right here. Uh, but otherwise that was functioning, so I'm not concerned about it. Try not to lose some buttons. And then on the back, these are your actual um, metallic pads for when the buttons on the top of the remote are depressed. You have these little metallic pads on the back of this um, sticky, uh, whatever you want to call this, tape uh, adhesive layer that goes over the top. Similar to some keyboards, if I can be honest. Uh, and obviously these little metal tabs are what short between pin to pin or pad to pad and uh, the corresponding change of what button was depressed uh, should occur. And I think I'm already seeing the, the issue with this remote. And let me throw it underneath the microscope and I'll show you. Hey, if you look at this bottom pad right here, and you can see, even though it's a bit scratched, how clean it is. When we start moving up the board, uh, especially to the pads where we were having issues, uh, you can see that there is a bit more tarnish. Let's take a look at the power button pad. Here we go, it at the top. And uh, yeah, it might be a slightly hard for you to tell, but it appears to me that these pads uh, were probably exposed somehow to a little bit of liquid and it dried out. And um, I'm thinking all we need to do is just uh, clean them off and we could restore, potentially restore this uh, controller back to operation. So let's do that. Well, cleaning went as I expected it would. For those of you who are wondering what's in this container, uh, this is Barkeeper's Friend. It's a popular uh, powder that I mix with a little bit of water. It's used for uh, polishing and cleaning uh, pots and pans. It works really good to get rid of oxidation off of copper traces and pads and etc. Of course, after using it to polish the pads, I cleaned it off with some isopropyl alcohol and then ended up spraying it and drying it off with some QD electronic cleaner. Uh, why do I go through that process? Well, for me, I think that's rather methodical and uh, hopefully gives a longer lasting fix. But we needed to test the volume up button. That was the first item that was bad. Well, first off, 
uh, I now immediately get an LED on this Arduino uh, IR receiver module and you're seeing the, the pulse code happening right up there in the upper right hand corner. So yay, that's fixed. Now let's check the power. Same thing. Happy about that. Our down, same thing. Our left, same thing. And I'm barely having to press these. And now our right, same thing. I would say that um, as far as our pad is concerned, we are, uh, we are there. So I'm pretty happy about that. I will uh, continue to test this more off camera, but uh, otherwise, hey, we're good to go. Well, one down, one more left to go. We've got to now take apart this uh, Apple TV remote. Uh, like I said, I don't have an Apple TV. Um, I'm not going to bother showing the plus or minus signal on those scope. Uh, I'll just test those things off camera because I got to fill in this video is long enough and you've already seen that information so no point in wasting the time. Uh, but the rest of this is operating off of Bluetooth. Uh, maybe there's a way for me to um, get this onto my computer to test it. Uh, if I can pair it with, uh, with a Windows PC. But uh, for now, we're just going to go ahead and take it apart. Now, uh, my sister's husband did tell me that he dropped it into a beverage, um, which is when it quit working. And uh, even though he gave it some time to uh, dry off, uh, the volume up and down obviously still worked, but none of the rest of the device did. Um, I think he mentioned he tried repairing it to the uh, Apple TV as well. But uh, I don't know. We'll find out what, uh, what we see in here. I suspect it's going to be uh, corrosion, to be honest. And probably just cleaning it up might repair this uh, controller as well. But like I said, I'm unsure if I'll be able to test it. So I'm going to have to do some additional research. Uh, if I cannot test it, well, all these items, including the uh, two toys I've repaired, uh, we'll get shipped back to them. It'll take me a bit longer to do the um, camera because I'm waiting on a battery for it. But, uh, you know, once it's back to them, they can pair, repair the devices. Uh, even this remote will need to be repaired to their TV because I had it paired to my TV in here. Um, but anyways, they can test it out and uh, provide final confirmation. Depending on when I get that confirmation back, I'll include it in this video. That being said, uh, let's tear that down this device too. Okay, so there essentially wasn't much to this. The uh, clamshell is held together with some double-sided adhesive, so some mild um, prying was able to bring this apart. But you do have to be careful because you do have a ribbon cable that sits and feeds into here that needs to be um, this needs to be loosened up so that this can come out. You don't want to tear that. Additionally. The battery runs 
uh, up to this ribbon cable here and plugs on the side of the board. Uh, so I had to loosen that connector in order to get this out. Um, and again, uh, other than one, two, three, four, five, six screws, I had originally taken these two out, but decided to go ahead and put them back in because there's no other need to leave them out. Uh, it was just some double-sided sticky tape up here uh, helping to hold in this board. Uh, and the battery ribbon cable as well has just a tiny tad of uh, double-sided sticky tape or some type of adhesive here helping to keep it pulled in and down. Now, initial, initially looking at this with just my eyes, uh, not underneath microscope, I'm not seeing any corrosion really. I don't know what to, to make of this, so I'm going to do some prodding around off camera and uh, look at it underneath my microscope and then maybe can uh, make a determination of what's going on and uh, we can come back to this. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I don't really know what to do with this. Uh, this PCB right here uh, not because I don't understand the components on it but I'm really not finding anything uh, so I've checked all the buttons uh, for continuity and uh, I'll, I'll just demonstrate one real quick so from this pin to this pin you should have continuity And you can hear that and it's the same thing on this side but if I were to uh, rotate it this way and check these two pins and it would be the same on the top I would not have continuity until it is uh, depressed let me try to do this without getting the fingers in the way I don't think I'm quite on there. Give me a second. See, there we go. Just wasn't quite on there. But I, I've t tested all of our buttons all the way around and they're, they are functional. I have looked over this board We've got a small fuse right here that uh, checks out perfectly fine. Okay, all the capacitors on this side check out. Uh, I didn't see any real corrosion on this side of the board. I mean, some cleaning up could be done. I did check that. That's primarily dirt all through here. But uh, it doesn't really look like liquid damage at all. And like I said, I've, I've checked all these capacitors. They seem to be functioning just fine. I tested all these coils that we have here and they were fine. This is on the back of the board now. Again, checked all of our diodes, all of our, our capacitors, all of our resistors. Everything checked out fine. Here looked like there was a tad bit of corrosion, but everything tests out fine. I mean, the only thing that's kind of iffy is the top of this cap right here, but it's still Tests perfectly fine. Just out of curiosity, you decide to plug it back up to the battery. And underneath my thermal camera went over the board and nothing was heating up. Uh, not even with depressing button, buttons on here. So, what I'm going to do is uh, just in case if 
there is something left on the board from it falling into a cup. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a good clean and uh, see at least where we can go from there. And probably ship this back to them. Now, if it doesn't work, I'm going to feel slightly bad about that. But, uh, you know, I don't have a spare board on hand to swap it out, and that doesn't really prove anything. And just cleaning it and sitting it back might not prove anything either. So, yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and do that next and clean this guy up and we'll go from there. Okay, so before I finish putting this back together I think I've come up with at least a solid plan to see if Bluetooth is working on it now I did reach back to my brother-in-law and he told me that uh, after the incident of it falling in his beverage um, and drying it out that uh, you know with the volume up and down still working uh, his assumption is is that the device was still still paired and to a degree that that is correct however your other buttons here uh, communicate over Bluetooth so it is still possible at, at least in my opinion that you could have still been paired for infrared um, but this Bluetooth controller right here could have taken a dump um, so we cleaned it up and the way I want to test even though I don't have a, a Mac or anything to actually try to pair this with is I believe that if I hold down menu and plus those two buttons or volume up so it would be this guy here and this button here you put this into pair mode and over here on my phone is a list of all available Bluetooth sources currently that my phone can detect from within my office I recognize every device on here from my computer to my kids little handheld um, Toby smartwatches uh, to my TV that's in the living room but uh, I think I would be able to at least hold that down and it broadcast out a signal uh, that would pop up on here. And I've rescanned several times, and uh, outside of those things, I'm not pulling up anything different. So let me uh, plug the battery in, and we can at least do this to test to see if the uh, if Bluetooth does still transmit a signal. And then if not, then I'm going to uh, focus a bit more on this IC right here. Now, uh, that being said, it is one of the very few ICs on the board. Uh, well, I mean, there are a couple more. But uh, it is one that does have uh, exposure to the... Um, Oh, mild exposure to the ball grid array underneath the IC so there is a potential that that this got damaged or something else but uh, yeah let me get the battery in we'll we'll test that out and if anything else uh, if it doesn't pop up with anything we can at least try reflow on this IC to see if that will resolve any issues not seeing it pop up I 
So I'll hold these down again. And count in my head, one, two, three, four, five. Hey, look. It appears to have popped back up and it's back at the top of available devices given how close the uh, Bluetooth uh, receiver is in the phone to this transmitter here I imagine that's due to proximity so we can at least say that well, it says it's connected and connected uh, as a controller, hmm, will it do anything if I press any buttons? Let me play with it for a second. Okay, so while I was able to identify with other devices throughout my house, that that is in fact the Bluetooth radio or transmission ID being sent out uh, and to various degrees able to connect uh, none of my devices could I control by this uh, remote and most likely simply because there's a compatibility issue the Bluetooth is designed to work with an Apple TV product and then the IR blaster is managed through the application of that product as well. So I think for now I'm just going to put it back together. I did contemplate potentially reflowing that chip, but I don't want to do anything without knowing definitively if the device just needs to be repaired to the uh, Apple TV at my uh, brother-in-law's house. I, I, I don't want to do anything here and potentially ruin what might not be an issue, if that makes sense. Uh, in which case, he can always just uh, mail this back to me and I would be happy to reflow the IC at that time or attempt to reball it. But without having a definitive or a device Apple product in front of me in which to use this on, um, we're going to say that most likely, since the uh, Bluetooth IC is transmitting out an ID for pairing, that it is operational. So uh, let's get this put back together. Just watching some some videos my sister has sent me. Obviously, the sections of tap in the future. I think I shipped that uh, package out on. Uh, let's see, yeah, four days ago I shipped it out. I got to my sister actually 
uh, yesterday it was delivered. They picked it up from the post office today. So it took about three days to get there. It's not bad. Um, my brother-in-law, Mickey, did say that uh, uh, that the Apple TV is turning itself on. I, I did tell him, you know, I doused it in a lot of isopropyl alcohol and um, QD uh, contact cleaner. There's probably a small potential some liquid is still sitting underneath the button and I didn't get fully dry. Uh, I would think that's not the case, but uh, again, I didn't have a whole lot to go on with Apple, but it is, it, you know, while I'm watching the video working fine, it's, the buttons are controlling things on the TV, which is great. And um, he said the Samsung one uh, works a lot better, so that's really good. We saw that ourselves on those oscilloscope. Uh, just told him to work the Apple one a few times, see if it persists, or and if it doesn't, then great, but if it does, they can send it back to me, and I'll, I'll take another look at that device. But it's good to see that it's actually connecting Bluetooth and functioning, so that's, that's definitely a, an improvement, although I don't quite believe that is something I did. It most likely just need to be repaired uh, oh, sorry, repaired, not repaired, but repaired with the TV. So if that makes sense. Anyways, I'm seeing the kids happy and uh, seeing them, those devices not going into the into the bin to get thrown away makes me happy. And so, yeah, I'll probably just uh, exit future me out somewhere. If you've enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing to this channel. And if you're liking the content, also clicky that uh, thumbs up icon. Uh, as I stated in the beginning, I operate having phone repairs as a business here in the state of Oklahoma. If you're in need of a repair, no matter where you're at, um, kids are found something funny, something to restore, or uh, maybe some limited data recovery, uh, my business information is on my Google site, link in the description. And if you just want to donate, then by all means, PayPal is in the description as well. And, and I would appreciate it. It goes back into uh, being able to do things here. That being said, uh, I need to get those things out to my sister. Hopefully I get a response uh, within a reasonable time to be able to edit this video. And I'll insert that response somewhere, probably right before the exposure. And uh, well, without further ado, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye. Mark?